Leipzig had the chance to go top of the Bundesliga table today had they beaten Borussia Dortmund, but I don't know if they would have expected to come up against the Dortmund that they did. Janusz Michalik joining me now to talk about this game, which finished 3-1 in favour of Borussia Dortmund. I'd like to start by talking about Erling Haaland. Two goals on the day. He looked unstoppable, Janusz. Uh, he always does, though, doesn't he? I mean, that's what happens when you have dominant players that have just about everything a modern player needs in their arsenal. And, and you know, some of it you can learn and some of, it, some of it is a bit of a gift from God. I mean, if you look at him, you know, uh, when we set up, uh, set up uh, Jaden Sancho with that powerful run on the right-hand side, of course, uh, remember Marco Royce played a part in that as well. And then when you look at it, the goal that he, first goal that he scored himself, that dribbling slalom to get away from people just before he found Sancho for the cross and then made his run into the penalty area and put it away, of course. I mean, we're talking about a player that has uh, tactical awareness already, that's got dribbling ability, that's got pace, that has strength. I mean, you know, the kid, because we still kind of have to call him that, has absolutely everything. So, so I, I don't think anybody is surprised. I mean, it, it, it doesn't always surfaces at all times but most of the time we see how dynamic he is and how much he changes games so yes yeah, so there's only a few players like him around the world we knew that before uh obviously he's been away for a uh, little bit because of injuries but just uh, just an incredible player that we'll talk about for years and the other goal scorer on the day for Borussia Dortmund was Jadon Sancho. He's had his critics this season, although 2021 has started pretty well for him with two goals in two games. Is it really as bad as some have made out? Well, it, it all depends how you look at it. Of course it's not. It's crazy for us and everybody in, in the media to, to do that. And we often doubt players. Uh, uh, just because otherwise what we talk about. But I think if you truly know the game, you, you just won. And and what happened here is is expectations, crazy and unrealistic expectations. Because, you know, last season, I think he had 17 goals and 17 assists. I mean, that just doesn't happen and shouldn't have happened. I mean, you know, credit to him. But if you asked him, I'm sure, you know, I remember looking at those statistics last season and said, how is it possible for such a young player? Uh, uh, so So almost... Almost, you know, that he's raised those expectations, uh, un, you know, in an unreal way. And so when it didn't happen to him and you could throw into it almost anything you want, Kay, right? You can say crazy season, COVID, um, you know, all the talk about his Manchester United move, all that plays on your mind in a way. And if you don't have that rhythm and if you don't start right away the way people expect you to, and as I've said, 17 goals, 17 assists, my goodness, is he going to get better? Playing for England, doing well for England as well. He's the next star. So it's it, sometimes you have those uh, moments in your career where you, of course, uh, you know, <laughs> When, when things don't work your way. But I'm glad that in the last two games, he had two goals and two assists. Maybe that's what gets him going. A, certainly a win like this against a big opponent like Leipzig away, where they don't lose, they don't concede goals. I mean, they had the best, best defensive record, right? I think nine goals conceded before that. Nine, they've shipped three. Yeah, they'd only lost one of their last 21 home games in the Bundesliga, and that was to Borussia Dortmund. So talk to me a little bit about the midfield battle, because I know you found that interesting today. Well, it, you know, I think what, 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 what's turned the game, and it's unfortunate in a way, was the injury to Axel Witzel. And you could see it right away when, when uh, Emre Can came into it. And you could certainly see it right when it happened, but, you know, but also in the second half, because I think uh, physically Haidara and uh, Zabitzer in particular were winning that, uh, you know, against, against uh, Axel Witzel. And I think uh, Thomas Delaney at the time, not just in terms of creativity, but physically, you could see that as well. So, so I think when Emre Chan came in, and you know, I can't necessarily put a finger on it, but I think the difference was that Emre Chan, you know, he drives the midfield. When he sees space in front of him, he goes into that space. Where if you see Witzel in particular, and even Delaney, they're passers. I mean, they anticipate the game. They can they can slow down the game, but I don't think of those two as necessarily players that will open up avenues for everybody else. Where Emre Chan, almost within the first play, I remember those couple plays there where it was just like. Boom. I mean, he was just going. He was mobile. He was good on both sides of the ball. And he was almost a box-to-box -box midfielder in this particular game, which I think he is anyway. 
So that was a massive difference. And of course, that opened up uh, a little bit more space for Sancho and Lee Holland. And by the way, you know, because we're talking about Jaden Sancho and his statistics in this particular game, we're talking about um, Erling Holland in this game as well. Let's not forget Marco Royce because he had an incredible, I mean, a little flick when, when Erling Holland went on the right hand side and Jaden Sancho scored his first. That little flick was important. And the third goal, which was uh, Holland's second, little ball, diagonal through ball, my goodness, was, uh, was superb uh, uh, for the 3 0. So Look, you have front three for Borussia Dortmund playing extremely well, something that hasn't happened in a long time, be it because of injuries or form. So a lot of positive uh, uh, there for Dortmund. A very slick Dortmund that we saw, the Dortmund you'd expect to see at their best level. Can they string some consistency together? Are they back this season, Janish? Uh, you know, again, we've talked about Holland. We've talked about Jane Sancho. You know, let's let's just let's just take it easy. It was it was an important win, and and, and it was always going to be important for both sides. And that's why I think if you RB Leipzig, especially with a good start to this game, because they did on Helinho again on the left hand side, Thomas Munier was probably going, mm, I'm going to be in for a long, long uh, night. But uh, this was an opportunity. Bayern Munich will not give you too many. When they do, you better take advantage of that. And I think Borussia Dortmund did because even though there's, I still believe they're in fourth, I think, you know, obviously that distance mm -hmm. has shortened just a little bit. They've made up um, uh, some points on, on Bayern Munich, on RB Leipzig, and even Leverkusen, who uh, drew against Bremen uh, uh, there. This was a huge opportunity for RB Leipzig. It was big for Dortmund because now we have a pretty good race. But let's not forget that Bayern Munich won't give you that many of them. And even though they're not looking great, they, go, they fall behind defensively, they have issues. You know, when the business end of the season comes around, Bayern Munich are going to be there. So when they do drop points like they did against Mönchengladbach from a winning position, you better take advantage of it. Dortmund did. And for RB Leipzig, that's a massive loss on many levels. Yeah, how costly is it? Do you think it's more psychologically that it's cost them losing out on this one? Well, it, it, it's you know it's it's number of levels. Uh, RB Leipzig, I've mentioned, had the best best defense in the league, and but they don't score goals. I mean, tw well, they did get one late, so now twenty six. Julian Nagelsmann is a great manager, but he can't score goals. I mean, their best goal scorer, I think, before today and still is is Yusuf Polzin, isn't he? We always knew that Timo Werner was going to be a big loss, and they've dealt with it well up until this point. Scoring by committee, it's a good thing, but it's probably not one that's going to win you a championship. Good defensively, 25, 26, 26 goals now, not a bad thing, but I think each team needs a dominant goal scorer, and we found a great example of that in Erling Holland. So I think if you're Leipzig, you worry because Nagelsmann can coach, but he can't score goals. There's still a long way to go in the Bundesliga this season, but a big win for Dortmund over Leipzig 3-1. It finished on the day. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.